Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Lucor Automotive. Today, clearly, we are not at Lucor Automotive. We're actually about uh, five iron away from Lucor Automotive, but we are over here visiting the guys from Fields Engineering um, because I heard they have a new thing and I want to see it. Uh, we actually were down at Barber Motorsports Park with these guys um, last year, and you saw us running around with their uh, Fields Auto Works Cardinal, and that was a cool little machine. Fun little track car, powered by a 2.3 turbo, um, super lightweight, tons of fun. Um, they also have a gentleman that they do like race car support for, uh, Colton Wade, who was driving, you would remember, an M3. There's Colton right there, and there is Colton's M3. As it were. Uh, well, at least there's some of Colton's M3. There's some... There's some bits missing. And, yeah, bits missing. So we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk with Colton here. We're going to get uh, some information about the Grid Life series, which Colton competes in, what his plans are for the 2023 season, because uh, they're in here working, and I'm going to come in here and distract them. So stay tuned. <laughs> last time you saw this car, well, last time you saw Colton, actually, um, we were down at Barber Motorsports Park and they were doing a track day event down there. And this is actually a vehicle that he's championed for quite a long time. Um, unfortunately, it's, uh, it's, it's done. Well, not really done, but it's done. So Colton, um, <clears throat> what happened? Well, <laughs> it's actually, it, it's, it's a terrible story. It didn't even happen during a race, it happened in practice. Oh, yeah, uh, but it was uh, last event of the season, um, our last GLTC event, um, and it was at Harlem Motorsports Park, which I'd never been to before, um, but just uh, while I was out for uh, practice and test day, the day we got there, I just uh, um, was progressively trying to use a little bit more curbing in a certain, in a certain corner uh, that had very little runoff, unfortunately. Um, and just, I just t took too big of a bite out of the corner, um, sent the car around, and there, there was five feet of grass before a concrete wall, so it was just one of those, one of those bad spots to be in, uh, but it was, it was just all driver error, just one of those things, just trying to be fast and yeah. lost the car. Um, but here we are, pulling parts off of the old one. This, she's essentially completely stripped down and gutted down next to some old wiring harnesses and junk, um, but this is... Uh, this is our workhorse moving forward for the GLTC series. So, out with the old. That's right. In with the new. Check this out. So, we've never shown this off, but you've had this for a little while. This was like a donor car before, right? Yes, this is actually, we bought this chassis uh, two seasons ago when we knew that we wanted to uh, keep the original M3 and GLTC um, and continue to race it wheel to wheel. So we bought this as a parts car. Uh, it was a running driving car. It wasn't an M3 that um, was was worth saving as a collector. It was definitely, it had definitely lived a hard life. Okay. Um, but it was a great parts car and the shell and the chassis itself is in great shape. Um, so we knew at some point there might come a time where the shell was actually the donor part that we're pulling off of this car. Gotcha. Um, which is eventually, ultimately, what ended up happening. Um, but we, we stripped down the shell. Um, we, there was a bunch of parts that we could save off of this car and from the old race car, uh, which we've kind of inventoried behind us. Um, but this got uh, sent out for media blasting. The entire car is powder coated. Um, it's a very clean start. Everything that we pulled off of the old M3 that we're reusing got uh, Parts cleaned, uh, refinished, painted, what have you, uh, cleaned up and ready to go on the new chassis. Um, and fortunately, a, a lot of the suspension components um, were savable. Um, obviously, we're going to reintegrate uh, like the ABS system and things of that nature from the old car onto this one. Um, but it's a great fresh start. It's how I wish our last car would have started. Yeah. Um, but you know, it, it, the, it's unfortunate what happened in the last M3, but. Um, this is going to be a better race car uh, and a better build than that car ever was. This, this is definitely, uh, you're getting beyond the average weekend racer kind of guy thing. Well, you know, I, I think back to all of the time and effort and money that we spent on uh, kind of retrofitting the street car into a race car. Um, and 
by God, I'm pretty sure we're going to have significantly less uh, man hours into this, just not having to work around the old chassis components, um, bits and pieces that were just crumbling and falling apart, um, fasteners that had to get drilled out or torched off because they were just old. I mean, this is, this is exactly um, the kind of starting point that a proper race car should have uh, versus trying to convert a, a street car. So this one is, is the final product is going to be um, something to really be proud of, I think. So this is kind of one of those <clears throat> do it right the first time? Yeah, yeah, the second time around. <laughs> <laughs> do it right the but second time? The, the, the Fields Auto Works guys, um, they were kind of cool. As they were pulling stuff off of the old chassis, if it was worth saving, it got parts cleaned and, yeah. and refinished or painted. I mean, they, we even did, you know, we did the rear, rear trailing arms, all of our... Um, like rear sway bar, all of our old MCS hardware, um, we cleaned up and, and prettied up and um, it's made the car easier to work on um, and in the end we're going to have something that's easier to maintain, more reliable, more functional. So this is entirely powder coated? Entirely, yep. Body, chest, everything, yep. other than under underside. Everything else in this entire car is yep. powder coated? Yep. Wow. What are you going to be running livery? Are you going to go with a kind of a similar... You know, um, I haven't quite decided. I sent a couple off-the-cuff ideas to um, Rob Wilkinson, who's the grid life photographer. Okay. He's done a lot of, like, he's designed a bunch of really cool liveries. Um, but I thought about doing something um, either Corvette racing or uh, Chevrolet racing, because we've got, we're going to have a GM power plant in this car now. Uh, so I thought doing a BMW with like a C5R livery would be cool. Now hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's talk about this. So <laughs> that used to be BMW powered. Yeah, that, that one over there. 54 car. Yep. Okay. This is going to be powered by what? A, a way overbuilt LS7 coming out of a C6 Corvette. Okay. Okay. And transmission-wise, I see a Tremec box. Yes, sitting so over here. We're, we're, we, we've got the Tremec going in the car. Um, I don't know if that's going to be our long-term solution. We've we've talked about a lot of different options, um, but as far as getting this car um, ready to test in a couple weeks and then ready to go racing in March, um, just going with the the T56 and bolting it right up sure. is the is the easiest, quickest route. Um, but we've talked about like dog engagement um, or even going sequential, um, but. I, I think let's let's see what happens with the Tremec and if there's any value in, in exploring other options, we certainly will. But gotcha. I think it's going to serve us just fine for now. Man, that is beautiful. I'm very excited to have like a nice, clean workspace, I bet. if you will. I mean, it's it's a place I spend a lot of time, and it's something I always wish we had in our old car. That is beautiful. They did a great job on it. So you were able to salvage a lot of parts off that other car. Yeah, so we were able to save all the uh, Essex hardware, um, brakes, uh, rotors, all that fun stuff. Um, the only thing you'll notice, uh, we have a ground control um, shock tower on this corner. We were not able to save the MCS part that was on here. Okay. Um, it's actually... We, this just, is the corner you... Yeah, this was the impact corner. Um, okay. We actually just stripped down that MCS shock tower uh, a couple hours ago, and it's sending, it's getting sent out to get rebuilt today. Okay. So this is just kind of a, we're working towards getting this thing to be a roller right now, so we can start working on driveline. Um, but this will eventually get replaced with the MCS that we're running elsewhere on the car. Um, something I'd like to revisit you may not have caught. This is going to be ready in a couple of weeks. So it Fantastic. won't be. Yeah, I know. Uh, Colton, there's not a car here. <laughs> you know what's, and it's funny too, because we lost a week, because um, the powder coat job took like yeah. six or seven days longer than we thought. Um, so we should have been at this point a week and a day ago. Um, but with Dustin and I working on this through the holidays, um, we're planning on having it drivable and ready to start testing for Barber in like the second, third week of January, third weekend of January. It won't be pretty. It won't have all the, the, the body work done. It won't be wrapped. Yeah. Um, we actually, we probably won't even have our GLTC map done for the uh, ECU, but it'll be drivable and testable. And you can sort the chassis and sort everything Sort the else. chassis out. Yep. All that fun stuff. And then uh, we've got a nice big break um, 
between that test day in January and we go to COTA in March. Okay. So um, <clears throat> for all of us, for all of us who, who you know, work at a, a more casual pace to get our cars put together. <laughs> this isn't even my day job. I'm done. Right. Hiding from work to get a race car done. <laughs> right. So they're going to build this entire car, which as you can see, they this just came in two days ago? We got it back on Monday. Monday, yeah. So it's Wednesday. They got this chassis back completely naked uh, two days ago. And they are now hanging parts, transferring stuff as, pos as fast as they possibly can yep. to get this thing into driving and racing shape. Yeah. In a couple weeks? Three, three weeks. Yep. We're Over hoping, two holidays. We're hoping to have power to the rear wheels and be able to drive it and steer it around uh, in about 10 days. Yeah. That's, for, that, yeah, sure. Uh-huh. <laughs> hey, I didn't think we'd be this far, frankly. I mean, it's, it's one thing that's different about this season versus uh, seasons prior is um, this is the kind of stuff that Rob and I were doing in our free time. We didn't have a motorsports director, if you will. Sure. Uh, Dustin Barty has stepped into that role this season. Um, and the motorsports side of fields is all he does. So okay. um, this would not have something a build like this would not have been possible last year or, or prior. Um, but since we've got Dustin here in house um, and it's happening at a relatively convenient time for me at work, uh, we're able to put a lot of man hours into this thing right now. Gotcha. Uh, it's going to need a lot of man hours. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. That's amazing. So you don't have to jump in quite that deep. God, no. Well, can, I mean, our first season with this thing, um, it was more street car than race car. Okay. Which, well, I guess not that one, but that one. Yeah. Um, it, was, it was seriously more street car than it was race car. As long as it, you know, you can get into GLTC as long as you're within that power to weight ratio and you've got, um, you've got all the, the safety equipment that they require. Sure. Um, but you don't, you know, as far, as far as the build goes, you can take it as far as you want. Um, and like, there's there's tons of guys that um, put this level of effort into it, and then there's tons of guys that, um, you know, that's it, it literally is their side hobby that they don't put a lot of time and effort into, and um, just weekend racer kind we, of stuff. weekend racers, and they have a great time too. I'm more I'm definitely more of a weekend racer. Kind yeah, of. yeah. Well, this, finding the time. Well, see, I said that I said that when I started. I was like, this is gonna be a little <laughs> thing, and now I mean. <laughs> Yeah. Got, I've got a teammate and a garage that you know supports the, the two cars. We've got a yeah, yeah, stacker yeah. trailer and a semi that hauls it all over the country. You know, this this was literally like it started in the the empty bay of my garage in my old house, and now it's yeah. I mean, what well, I don't know what you want to call this, but it's, this is the addiction. This is as much racing as I ever thought I'd be doing. <laughs> it starts with just a little bit on the weekend. Yeah, that's it. And then three years later, you're here yeah yeah exactly that's wild i've got three race cars being built at the same time so what's the what's the plan for this guy so this is um one of those things that uh logic does not apply to i have a very emotional attachment to this chassis sure um it's what got me into racing it was my first track day car um it's the bmw that i kind of like fell in love with in high school um so it does have a special place in my life so when we get done building the the new race car um, my plan for this is just to straighten out the frame and uh, essentially build it back to what it was um, I guess in 2020 and 2021 it'll be an s54 powered um, essentially like GT4 car almost okay um, but beyond that it'll go to some track days um, and I'll have some fun with it on the side, not not racing it wheel to wheel. And I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it nice and pretty and put it in my garage. I mean, this is, you know, it's yeah, it's race car. Yeah. But it's not like you could still kind of drive this on the street. Oh yeah, I mean, it's still even as a even in GLTC trim, it was still street legal. Um, that's one of the reasons I want to I want to straighten it out, clean it up. I'd yeah. like to build this car as nice as we should have built it the first time. When he's um, saying straighten it out, by the way. Yeah, I mean literally straighten so, it out. That's supposed to be kind of more of a straight. As you can see, this is obviously where the where you took your your yeah, impact. Yeah, it, it it bent both of the frame horns. This one actually cracked downwards, mounted to the well to the shell. But the rest of the car is actually pretty okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and the the back rear quarter. It'll have to get pulled out and then bondoed and made to look nice. But this car is not our priority. It's it's gonna yeah. sit here for a while until we've got the resources to kind of build it back, and it'll be a side project for us. 
one of my first and only races in this car. So I'd like to I'd like to bring it back, and um, it's got a lot of good memories. And yeah, I'd like for it to be something that I can, even if it's just walking out into the garage and seeing it and making me smile. I'd love yeah, to taking it to go get coffee or yeah, ice cream exactly, or whatever. Exactly. I, I get the the nostalgia side of thing, and I think probably basically everybody that watches this stuff totally gets the whole like making a decision based on a nostalgia and an emotional thing. Like I said, logic does not apply. Right. It's not about money. It's not about logic. <laughs> I understand that. Yeah. I'm doing this because I want to. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, I, I get I get the whole bring it back even though I probably shouldn't. I mean, it's, it took some damage. You know, this would probably be the end of most cars. Yep. But, yeah, I get it. Hey, there's a, you can even get the slightly abused sticker. That's right. It's all right. The it's, sticker still it's survived. It's finally aged. <laughs> so, Colton races in this series. He does the grid life thing. He does race car stuff. In addition to this, you're also now essentially a, a giving a motorsports seat or a, a what do you what do you want to call it? Oh, the scholarship program. Yeah, a yeah, scholarship yeah. program. Yeah. So you're helping other people get a chance to get into this kind of thing. Yeah. Um, one of the things uh, over the last couple of years I've kind of wanted to do uh, was just kind of give back to the, uh, not just the grid life community, but the whole the whole grassroots motorsports scene, really. Mm -hmm. um, it's been such a huge positive influence in my life um, that I want to, like, find a way to, to give that feeling back to the paddock in, in a certain way. Um, yeah. and one of the things we noticed as we were racing in GLTC was uh, not just in our series, but in a lot of series, there's a there's a lack of representation among like talented, qualified female drivers. Sure. And even the one, even the females that we do have in the field, they're far and few between at most events. Um, so we saw an opportunity there um, to kind of scratch my itch to do something um, nice and fun for the community uh, and also try to get more women involved in our sports. So every year we pick one driver from um, any of the track day community throughout the United States. So anybody that's in like an advanced HPDE okay. group or has done time attack or has wheel to wheel, wheel experience in another series, um, if they are a qualified driver, uh, they can apply for our scholarship um, and we put them in one of our GLTC cars for a weekend. Um, we give them full trackside support, engineering on the car, driver and data coaching, hospitality, wow. all of it. Um, it's typically a three-day event, and uh, the way Gridlife does their competition licensing is um, they put you right into the field for uh, a couple provisional races. Okay. And if you finish the weekend... Um, you know, racing clean, nosing up in there and trying to, yeah. you know, rate, actually race, um, and you do it with a, a cool head and you make a good impression, you end the weekend with your competition license. So our wow. goal every year is to get one more female driver um, licensed to race in GLTC. That is cool. In one of your cars? In one of our cars. Yeah, no cost to them. I mean, you, you got to find your way to the track. Yeah, We're yeah, not gonna, yeah. Like, yeah fly yeah. out, but you show up, we feed you. Um, We've got uh, a team rig that folks can stay in, or we can put you up in a hotel. Um, wow. So if you can make it to the track, uh, we'll make your weekend happen. Um, and you, you'll probably, by the time we give the scholarship out again, there'll probably be a couple cars to pick from. So what's the, what are the stipulations on, on doing that? Uh, as far as applying? Yeah. Um, so if you check the Instagram, um, yesterday or the day before, I announced a couple dates of when the uh, application link will go live. Um, what day we're going to open and close applications, and then what day we're picking a winner. Okay. Um, so we'll we'll get a bunch of applications in. I'll so sort through them personally. Me and Dustin will go through them. Um, but really, the the qualifications are um, you have to have spent uh, enough time in some sort, at least some sort of high performance driving education program or HPDE, yeah. um, and gotten to either a um, a, a good intermediate group or a solid advanced group. Okay. But like our last year's winner was already a time attack driver. She just never raced wheel to wheel. So okay. she didn't have a competition license, but she was driving in time attack. Um, and even if these, even if our applicants have raced in another series, um, we want to try to get them involved in grid life. So if gotcha. they've, if they've got their competition license from elsewhere, um, or on, or on the verge of getting their competition license elsewhere, um, they can come to us, apply, um, and if they get the scholarship, they'll essentially end end the weekend with their grid life competition license, and they'll be obviously invited back to race more GLTC events with us. Now that's freaking amazing! Yeah, good for you. 
That's it's been awesome. fun. Last year was our pilot program. Uh, never done it before. Um, our recipient, Lisa Keys, drove our uh, Honda World Challenge uh, RSX for that weekend. Did a bang up job. She's a great driver, a great person. And what's really cool is she's gone on to race like four or five other events with us in her Civic. Oh, cool. So she got her license and then um, it's not like she just kind of disappeared. We never saw her again. She came right back and raced with us for a few more weekends. So That's awesome. It's really, really cool. That's awesome. So there you go, folks. Uh, I'm going to get out of these guys' hair a little bit. Uh, they have a lot of work to do. Yeah. Um, but Colton and I have been talking back and forth for a little while, and I wanted to be able to get over here and show you guys a little bit more of the, the other types of racing. We do a lot of drag race stuff. We do a lot of that kind of thing. But this is a whole different world. It is a different world. And it's, it's really not horribly, horribly expensive. It can be. But it's not horribly expensive to get involved in. Well, you know how it is. It's how far down the rabbit hole do you want to go, right? Right. It, yeah. It, it's, it's all, what's your, what's your stopping point? You don't have to have a brand new chassis that's powder coated yeah. that you're going to build. You, in you don't have to spend weeks. 10 grand on a built motor. It's, no. It's all stuff that you do not have to do. You can have. start with something like this. Right? Yeah, exactly. A fourth gen base model Firebird and just make it in something fun. Yep, and it will be. And actually, th so this will be Dustin's GLTC car. It will also be an LS powered car. Um, but it's in the middle of getting torn down and it's going to go to media blasting like that car did. It's not going to get powder coated. Um, but it should be a nice, fresh build as well. Uh, yeah. I know Dustin's really excited about that car. It's going to be fun to watch it come together. So, there you go, guys. Wanted to, wanted to give you guys a little bit of uh, an insight. These guys are literally right around the corner from us. Um, I wanted to show you guys a little bit of what else is out there as far as the motorsports world goes. It's not all about going fast in a straight line. These guys do a ton of curves. They go all over the place. Your next race is at Circuit of the Americas? Yeah, and we turn left and right. Yeah, we, we do both left and right. So their next race is going to be a circuit of the Americas, like Formula One style stuff, like serious tracks. They go all over the country. Grid Life's a great series too because it gives you an ability to really blend with a lot of people. Um, it's really kind of one of those really neat experiences now that's not just race car stuff too. Like it's a whole weekend experience. Oh yeah. Like it's not just, you know, car guys blasting around on track. Hopefully. Yeah, well that was one of their big charges this year is they're really ramping up the, the festival side of yeah. the organization where they're, um, like we're doing a festival at Lime Rock this year. Um, our West Coast Festival is at Laguna, which is going to be awesome. Oh, that'll be amazing. Yeah, it's going to be incredible. Um, so you've got racing all weekend at a lot of our events and then essentially from like lunchtime till 2 or 3 a.m. you've got live concerts going on while yeah. there's racing happening on track. It's like... It's like all the best things that you can hope for right. in a social scene mixed into motorsports. Uh, and it's, it's one of those experiences that you actually have to go and experience it for yourself to get the whole, the whole picture. But um, it's, it's unlike anything else I've ever found in motorsports. I mean, I don't know of anything else like it. Um, and to your point about you know, follow along the series, they live stream all their events as well. Yep. So like when, we, when we're at Coda, when we're at Laguna Seca, when we're at Watkins Glen for the first time this year. Oh, wow. Um, We'll be live streaming those events, um, and you can watch them on the Grid Life website, YouTube, Twitch. Um, the exposure for these live streams is huge. I mean, it's hundreds of thousands of people that tune into this thing. Yeah. So it's it's so uh, it's such a weird feeling um, being such a homegrown little grassroots organization with this giant young cult following almost. Uh, yeah. Of people well, it's online. it's brought a, it's brought a. A motorsports to the younger generation. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can tell by the crowd at, yeah. at these festivals. I mean, it's... It's not old, old farts with gray beards. <laughs> you know. I'm, I'm just... in my mid-30s, and there's some, like, especially, like, in the concert scene. I'm walking through the crowd. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> I get that feeling a lot these days. I get that feeling a lot. So, Colton, what's your social medias that we need these people to pay, pay attention to? So, you can find me on Facebook, um, on my personal page, just Colton Wade. Um, and then you can find me at the same name on Instagram for a personal page. If you want to follow along on just the race car stuff, it's at RegularGuyRacingM3 on Instagram. Um, I'm trying to do my best capturing our build on this car because I did a crap job on that one. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm taking time to try to photo document as much as I can, get videos out there. Um, that one wasn't as much fun to follow along. This is going to be such a, a cool and well done build that I think it's going to be worth watching. And this is also something that most people would never come anywhere close to doing. So to your point. We can um, experience it through you. Well, and you're going to experience the newness of it through me as well because a lot of this stuff, 
I've never done. Um, the work we're doing on this show is a completely different kind of work than trying to convert an old streetcar into a road race sure. car. Sure. Um, this is like building a grown-up go-kart almost, which has been a blast, but like I've never wired up an ECU before. <laughs> this, is, this is new to me, so yeah. like, it's, it's, some of this stuff's really intimidating, um, but it, it's also stuff that I've always wanted to do, so yeah. it's gonna be fun. I'm gonna have fun, I'm gonna have fun doing it and learning. That's well, take sure. your time, because you've only got weeks. <laughs> yeah, you got three weeks, you're plenty fine. Plenty of time to burn. Don't worry about it. All right, Colton, appreciate it, man. Yeah, absolutely, it was fun. Thanks for uh, watching, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Uh, regular guy racing, bringing a new M3 back to uh, back to life here. Well, an old new M3 back to life. Uh, Going to be in the Grid Life Time Attack series. Uh, we will be able to show you guys some more of what these guys do. Uh, Fields Auto Works are a, a good company that's literally right around the corner from us. We've done some work with those guys in the past, and we'll we'll certainly show you guys some more of their stuff. So. Like, comment, subscribe, all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, if you know anybody that's a qualified, talented female racer that might be interested, you know, you can look into this kind of situation as far as their, their guest driver situation. Um, you're not going to find a better opportunity to be able to get in a, in a race car and be able to go do wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing like that uh, with almost no dime out of your own pocket. So anyway, like, comment, subscribe, all that kind of fun stuff. I got to go back to work. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.